Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for being here and taking the time to watch my videos and support me. I truly appreciate it. Today's tutorial is going to be on my base makeup. Um, I did not film the eye tutorial here. It was just solely on the base makeup. So if you want to see the eye tutorial, head over to TikTok because I will have it posted before I get this up on YouTube. I'll have my TikTok and Instagram names in the description box along with all the products I used. So other than that, I don't have anything else other than don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already like the video if you truly find it helpful or if you just like it and want to support me and feel free to share it if that is something you want to do so other than that let's go ahead and just jump into the tutorial I'm going to start off with primer and the primer I'm using is the elf mint melt I absolutely love this primer you can get it at Ulta and Walmart it smells really good and it feels really good on your skin and it does a really good job of gripping your makeup and keeping your makeup in place all day so all I'm going to do is take a few pumps on my fingers just like this and then I just rub them together and warm it up and then I'm just going to apply this all over my face. soak into my skin for a good 30 seconds to a minute and then I'm going to go in with my foundation. I absolutely love this foundation. It is my ride or die. It is the It Cosmetics CC Color Correcting Full Coverage Cream and right now I am in the shade Light. I'm going to take a few pumps just on this little palette I have and I'm going to use a damp beauty sponge. This one is from Real Techniques. You can use any one that you want and I'm just going to grab a little bit of that foundation like this and then I'm going to use this palette to pat it out so I can get a nice even layer on the like butt or the fluffy or whatever you want to call that part of the sponge. And then I'm just going to continue to do this and kind of roll the sponge like this. So like I said, it's going to give me a nice even layer. So when I apply it to my skin, I know it's going to go on in a nice even layer as well. Then I'm just going to go through and just stamp this all over my skin. Don't forget your ears because you do want your ears to be the same shade as your face. And it doesn't have to be a whole lot, just use whatever is on there. And then I also try to get this to go as far on my face as possible so I get a nice even thin layer. my face so you can see how much coverage this foundation has and I only used a little bit but it's covering every single bit of my redness. Let's move on to concealer. The concealer I use is Urban Decay's Stay Naked Concealer and I am in the shade 30 in in. I absolutely love this concealer. I've used it for years. It is so lightweight but it gives you such good coverage. So how I apply this for my under eye is right here on the top part of my cheek. I do not apply it way up in here. It's easier to put it down here and blend upward towards your under eye so it's nice and thin. Whereas if you were to put it here, it is harder to get one of these makeup sponges way up in there to blend it downward. So I like to put it on the top part of my cheek, like right in here, and then I'll blend it up and blend it out from there. For this eye, I'm going to show you how I blend it out with a brush. So I'm going to use the number seven Heavenly Lux brush from IT Cosmetics, and I'm just going to start patting that out. This way, again, you're getting that nice, even thin layer by not immediately going up to that under eye. You're going to keep it nice and thin. So I'll get up into that under eye. I bring it down the side of my nose. And I love to blend this on the apples of my cheek because I like this part of my face to be really bright so it brings it forward. So I'll take that just on the apple of the cheek. I'm going to use this little dot over here to apply this to the upper part of my cheek because I want this part of my face to look lifted and bright. And then I'm going to take this on the temples and then whatever's on the brush, I'm going to apply that to my eyelid. So I think the application looks good right now with the brush, so I'm just going to use the damp beauty sponge to go over the edges and kind of make sure everything is looking really smoothed and blended out. For the center of my face, I'm going to take the concealer and just add a few dots to my forehead. I'm going to run this down the center of my nose, add a tiny little dot here on the cupid's bow like that, and then the forefront of my chin. 
Then I'm going to take the um, brush again and we're just going to blend that out. For my forehead, I kind of do like an upside down triangle, but I honestly try to avoid the center in between my eyebrows because I feel like that's where my makeup likes to just settle and it just doesn't look good by the end of the day. It just kind of like um, builds up there and I don't like that. So I kind of avoid anything beyond foundation in between my eyebrows. go over the edges, soften everything up before I go in with the beauty sponge. For my nose, I kind of pinch the brush like this to get it into a smaller form. And then I just kind of, again, stipple this down my nose. And then I'm going to move on to my chin. And then I'm going to wipe the brush off and we're going to move on to the Cupid's bow. Again, I'm just going to mush the brush so it's thinner. down the line of my lip and the cupid's bow. Now I'm just going to go over everything again with my beauty sponge, starting with the edges. Before I set my face, I'm going to have this beauty sponge handy because as you can see, if I close my eyes, the concealer has creased in my eyelid, which is okay. I'm also going to start prepping it to set my face and I'm going to use the Locket Translucent Setting Powder from Kat Von D. So before I actually set my face, I'm going to use my orange beauty sponge from Real Techniques. I'm just going to smooth out any of the creases that were left by my concealer. And then I'm immediately going to go in with my Real Techniques microfiber sponge and I'm going to set it. So I'm going to get some powder on the sponge. So I have both of them right here and ready. So I'm going to smooth out these lines. And then look up, but relax your eye so you can get those little wrinkles and little creases underneath your eye. Everybody has them, don't even worry. And I'm going to set that down and I'm immediately going to go in and start setting this, but I'm going to start on the outer part of my cheek to get a lot of that powder off because I don't need that much for just my eye area. And I'm gonna look up and get that set. Then I'm going to go through and work in the rest of the powder and make it go as far as I can. All right, we're gonna grab a little powder to do the other eye. So we're going to again smooth out all the creases from the concealer. I'm going to set that. For my under eye, I do squeeze the beauty sponges so they go thinner because I feel like it's easier to get in that under eye area because it's such a small area. And then I'm just going to go through and set the rest of my face. with the beauty sponge I'm going to go in with this big fluffy brush it's an e3 brush from morphe and I'm just going to kind of stipple this like this all over my face to pick up any extra product or disperse any extra powder that's on my face that way there's no extra left on um, my foundation and concealer and it's just nice and even and I just feel like everything has been blended out to its maximum form I'm now going to move on to contour and I'm going to be using the Kat Von D shade and light palette I'm going to be mixing the shades shadow play with a little bit of the shade Subconscious. The brush I'm going to contour with is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's the A23 brush. Mine did break, so I had to tape it. I'm just going to hold my hair back since I'm not wearing a headband or anything, and I'm going to start my contour at the top of my ear, and I'm going to follow it down on the under part of my cheekbone, and then about this part of your cheek where if you were to suck it in, it would be like the hollow part of your cheek, so like right here, this is where I'm going to start angling this downward because for me, I like my face to look a little bit more narrow and long because I have such a round face. Um, for me, when I do contour, I kind of like to change the shape of my face a little bit or I like to play with the shape of my face. And lately, I've just really been liking a narrow and longer face. So by doing this kind of thing, it's making my face look more narrow and longer. So I'll just kind of show you. I'm going to start with little circular motions. And sometimes I like to start a little higher so I can blend it 
So I'm not starting at the under part of my cheek, if that makes sense. I'm starting like on my cheekbone, and then that way when I'm doing these circular motions, I'm actually blending it to be the on the bottom of my cheekbone. I hope that makes sense. And then once I can tell there's hardly any product left, that's when we're gonna start bringing it downward and shaping it so it is a longer face shape. Really be careful when you're bringing this down by your mouth because this area right here can look a little muddy really quickly if you're adding too much. I like to have just a light amount so it just casts a light shadow there to kind of narrow in my face. I would know, I don't want to have as much as I would up here, right here. So really make sure that that pigment is up here underneath your cheekbone. And then when you can tell there's hardly anything left, then start dragging that down. One more thing with contouring that just popped in my mind is don't change your face shape while you're contouring. So don't suck in your cheeks or move your cheeks side to side while you're contouring. You can do that to get the area or find the spot where you want to contour, but don't do it while you are contouring. So for example, you don't want to contour when you're like this because you don't walk around like that. Your face isn't like that for most of the day. So you can do this to find the area where you want to contour, but then put your face back to a relaxed state. That way you're not looking a little weird when you're done contouring your face because now you've contoured your face to sit like that all day. So if you don't do that, don't contour your face like that. Contour your face in a relaxed state. All right, you guys, so we're gonna start again at the top of the ear. We're gonna use small circular motions on the cheekbone, but we're blending it downward underneath our cheekbone. So the hollow part of your cheek, you're just enhancing that. my face look narrowed for my temples I'm going to contour up here but then I'm going to get smaller and smaller as I work my way towards my eyebrow so I'm kind of going like this so if I start here it would open up like that but I'm also going to drag my contour along my hairline that way everything kind of just flows and there's no harsh lines or anything stops you're not going to make it as, as harsh of a contour in my hairline, but I am just going to use this to kind of just drag it like this. That way everything kind of connects and looks seamless. My hair is, my hair is a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. So for my chin and jaw, I am just going to, again, you don't want to change the shape of your face. You don't want to be like, like that contouring your jaw. So I just kind of look to the side. I see where the natural shadow is. And I'm just going to use light back and forth motions to enhance my natural jawline. Up here for my chin, where it kind of, you can see it when I was just talking right here, that line, I'm going to follow that. To contour my mouth and my nose, I just use a brush out of an Anastasia contour palette. I use actually both ends of it. So right now I'm going to use the fluffier end to do my bottom lip. So I have some contour on here and I'm just going to run this along the entire bottom lip. It's kind of half on your lip and half on your skin. So like right here. So I'm just gonna do this and just lightly dust this across the lip line to create a shadow so your lips look fuller. I'm going to flip it over and use this smaller side and I'm going to run this down the middle of the cupid's bow. And a little dimension there. And we're also going to run it. I like to use my nostrils for a guide. So right here where my nostrils kind of just flatten out into my upper lip, I'm going to set the brush there and I'm just going to make a little mark. And we're gonna do that to the other side. So I just kind of set it at the very base of my nostril and then I just come straight down. Okay, so after you make your marks, you're going to use the same side of the brush, and I just like to kind of start curving it around like this. So I'm not coming straight down and then over, I'm just making a curve to create almost like a natural shadow. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of go through and buff out the edges. Sometimes I'll use my finger. So now I'm going to go back to this side of the brush and I'm going to contour my nose. What I like to do when I contour my nose is I like to start at the front of my brow and I'm just going to lightly drag this down. When you look into the mirror, you should be able to see the natural casted shadow on your nose. So when I set this down, I'm just going to drag this down and follow the natural curve 
that is here on my nose. Yes, I'm just kind of do like painting. That's kind of what it reminds me of. The tip of my nose is really bulby and to me honestly is the only part of my nose that really needs to be contoured but if I was just to contour the tip of my nose I just feel like it's going to look a little weird so I'd like to add a little bit of warmth and just enhance the natural shadows of my nose without having to make it look thinner or bigger. So what I like to do for the tip of my nose is I'm going to come in at like an angle like this to kind of offset the bulby part of my nose and bring it in so it's not coming out so far so it kind of looks a little straighter if that makes sense so I'm just going to kind of bring it in to almost like to a point like that and then I'm going to use a circular motion like this to kind of blend it downward onto this part of my nose so it's not upward so it kind of cuts it a little bit short but not too bad because I kind of like my nose to look a little bit longer as well I'm done contouring I'm going to go back in with that e3 brush from morphe and just go over the edges as well there's nothing on this brush but I just feel like it really helps to fuse everything so it's not looking so harsh if that makes sense I mean I'm sure there's powder left in the brush but I didn't pick anything else up I'm just gonna go over all that contour I don't know and it just puts like a nice like blurred effect over the contour if that makes sense I'm now going to apply bronzer over top that contour. I'm going to be using the Benefit Hula Light Bronzer with a Morphe M105 brush. And I'm going to tap any excess off the brush. I'm just going to hold my hair back and I'm going to use really big circular motions to go over that contour to add some warmth to my face and also again, just really diffuse and blend out that contour. I'm going to be using a highlighter and blush palette I got from my BoxyCharm last month. It is called the Glow Getter Face Palette from Blink. These blushes are so pigmented and blend out so beautifully. I have been obsessed with this palette. To apply my blush, I'm going to be using Morphe's E4 Blush Brush. Mine is very disheveled, you guys. This is not how it's supposed to look like. It's zipped up in a zipper on vacation and I just haven't gotten a new one. But honestly, I super love this shape I have created with this brush and that is why I have not gotten a new one. After I put blush on these, I usually squeeze the brush like this to get a more ovaled shape like that. And I'll just use this area of the brush to apply my blushes. So I hope that makes sense. I absolutely love this brush. I should probably get a new one, but honestly, like I said, I really liked the shape I've created <laughs> with this brush. So the first, I'm going to use all four of these blushes. The first one I'm going to go into is Talented right here. And I'm just going to stamp it like this on the brush and kind of aim for that area I just showed you. I'm gonna blow off any extra. And then again, I'm just going to pinch the brush like this to pat off any extra so it looks like this when I apply it to my cheek so this part is going to be against my cheek so it's going to be that nice oval shape on my cheek I usually start my blush about here and work upward towards my temple first and then whatever is left on the brush I will bring it down towards the apples of my cheek so I'll just kind of show you now and I use like stippling motions just like this and just trust the process here okay the first day I did this, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, what I do? But honestly, trust me. And now I'm just going over the edges of where I just applied. So you're going to blend out the edges of that blush. And again, I'm just using stippling motions. And I'm slowly bringing this in towards the apple of my cheek. I'm now going to go into the shade Ambitious right here and I'm just going to take the smallest amount and I'm going to put it down on like the furthest part of the brush. So I'm just kind of using it like this and stamping it. So as you can see, it's on the very bottom part of the brush. <sighs> Blow that off. I kind of use my makeup towel too sometimes to just kind of buff it off like that. And then what I'm going to do is mush my brush again. And then I like to take this along kind of where I just did my contour, but this is going to tie in kind of the in-between between contour and blush. And this just really adds a little something, a little bit more shaping to my face, as you can say. Honestly, you could stop here, 
but you know I'm just going to show you exactly how I've been doing my face because you guys have been asking me so I'm going to show you exactly what I've been doing so I'm going to take this pull my hair back and then right here is where I'm going to apply it just with stippling motions just like this really lightly and really quickly now I'm going to take the shade resilient right here just a little bit like that it's kind of all over the center of the brush I'm not going to mash it this time but I am going to take it on the on the towel and I'm just going to kind of do that and then we're just going to kind of go in this area right here blend out anything bring in a nice little pink Honestly, you guys, this literally takes just a few seconds, but since I have to stop and explain, it obviously takes me a little bit longer, but. Okay, and now I'm just going to clean the brush off like this. And now I'm going to go into the shade Accomplished right here, the lightest pink, and I'm going to get it all over the brush. And then I'm going to just kind of stamp it along the entire top part of my cheek. It just adds in such a beautiful pink and ties everything together. And then whatever's left on the brush, I always just rub this on the tip of my nose like this. Don't ask me why, I just have always done it. I don't really know why. I Now, like when I try to think of an explanation, I think it just ties everything together. I saw someone's comment yesterday on TikTok and they're like, what was, it made me laugh so loud and hard. They were like, what was the point of putting all that makeup if you're just gonna make your nose as red as it was before makeup? And I just lost, I'm like, that is so effing funny because I don't know why I put blush on my nose. I'm going to go back in with my E3 brush from Morphe and I'm just going to stipple over everything because like I said, it just adds this nice, like blurring effect. So now the last step I'm going to do for my face is brighten my under eye, and that's also going to kind of diffuse out this blush. So what I'm going to do is go back into the Shade and Light palette from Kat Von D, and I'm going to grab the shades Lyric and Levitation on a Morphe M438 brush. I'm going to grab more of the pink shade than I am the banana shade just because it is going into winter and I've lost a lot of my tan, so the pink shade is better for my more fair skin right now. So I grabbed a little bit on this brush and I'm just going to start stippling it at the under eye, which is also right on top of that blush. I get that right up in the corner. And pretty much everywhere that I applied concealer to, that's where I'm going to aim these brightening shades at. Honestly, you guys, I never skip this step. A lot of people ask me how I get that brightening glow from within look, and this is one of the steps I feel like really does that because it is just a brightening powder that when you apply it like this, it just brightens up that under eye. When I look into the viewfinder, I see a difference. So I see how blended and smooth and diffused and bright this under eye looks compared to this under eye. So honestly, I never skip this step. All right, you guys, so I got my brows, my eyes, and my lips done. So now I'm going to walk you through what I do for my highlighter. So the highlighter palettes I have been using are the Scott Barnes Showy and Glowy palette, and I've also been using the Hourglass Ambient Trio palette. I apply my highlighters with the Morphe M501 brush, and I'm going to start with the shade Twilight Sand. And I'm just going to kind of like pat it in the um, highlighter so you're not getting very much on the brush. And then I like to start about here, and I'm just going to add the slightest highlight. I'm going to use circular motions to start blending this on the top part of my cheekbone, and I'm also going to work it up into my temple area. Take just a little bit more of that, tap it off, and add it to my chin. I'm just gonna lightly dust this on the front of my chin. I'm now going to use an old Morphe M506 brush, and I'm going to mix the shades Twilight Sand and Pinkaboo. I'm going to apply this on my upper lip line and also on the cupid's bow. Okay. Now I'm just going to take the shade Twilight Sand on that same M506 brush and I'm going to run it down the center of my nose, avoiding in between my eyebrows. So I'll start about here and I'm just going to slowly drag it in an up and downward motion and just line the center of my nose. And then I'm also going to add a little bit to the tip of my nose. Okay, and I'm just going to use my ring finger and just kind of go over that so it blends it in. So that's all I'm going to do with the scar, 
tart. That's all I'm gonna do with the Scott Barnes palette. Now I'm going to go into that Hourglass Trio and I'm going to grab these two lighter shades. And I just kind of like, let me see, I just kind of do this through the palette tap off the extra and I'm going to go over top of that highlighter and it just adds it kind of dims it a little bit but adds this beautiful like glow over top of the highlighter so I'll just show you so it's just going to be big circular motions directly over the top of my highlighters and I just add this over top of everywhere I put highlighters we'll start with the chin just run it down my nose and over the cupid's bow I usually don't go in and add highlighter to my forehead, but in this case, I will take a small amount of the Hourglass um, highlighters, and I'm just going to add it on the forefront of my forehead up here, kind of where it's already protruding. Light is going to hit there. So I'm just going to add this little glow. It's not going to be like a super big highlight, but it is going to add just the slightest glow to my forehead so it's not left out. Now to set everything into place, I'm going to use the Morphe Continuous Mist Setting Spray. I'm just going to give it a light misting. I'm going to dry that. So bougie, aren't I? Honestly though, it does help it dry a lot faster, so that's honestly why I do that. And it's all broken, so I have to like hold it together. It just broke last week and I was really sad. Okay. So now that that's done, let me go ahead and um, fix up my hair really quick and I'm going to go throw on my actual outfit and I'll come back and close up the video with you. All right, you guys, here is your final look. Thank you so freaking much for taking the time and watching my video. As always, leave me any kind of questions or comments in the comment section and I will get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video if you found it was helpful or if you just wanna help support me or if you just feel like one of your friends could benefit from seeing this video as well. Thank you guys again so freaking much and I hope to see you guys in my next video.